Hey there, my fellow designers and creatives. Hope you're all doing well. Welcome back to another video in this Rive tutorial series. In this video, we're gonna go ahead and set up a system where when the button is pressed, the animation is triggered. And we're gonna do a couple of things. We're gonna create a new input called as a trigger, and we're gonna set all of that up, and I'm gonna show you how to do that. And let me show you how the animation quickly works. So if I click on play, and let's say I've set the score here to 785, which means it would do one milestone and the second milestone. I hover on the button, I press, and then the animation is triggered. And as you can see, we also changed it to a reset button because when the animation is happening, it should be in a disabled state because I should not be able to interrupt the animation or do anything, right? So we're gonna go ahead and set up the disabled state for the reset. We're gonna set up the button disabled state. We're gonna animate all of that and define a trigger so that this animation happens when I press on the button. So without any further ado, let's get started. Okay, so now let's set up the system where when I press on the button and I lift my finger or basically, you know, remove the click from my trackpad, the animation triggers. Now, let's go back to the animate mode over here. Now, we set up multiple listeners, all right? And essentially what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, hey, button surface, which is what we have been transitioning, when I press up, all right, when I basically remove my finger, I want you to take off the press effect. Very simple, right? Which is basically what's happening over here. When I click on this, I press down, and on the left side, you can see the press effect is checked on, all right? And when I do the pointer up animation, which is basically when I remove my finger from the trackpad, the pointer goes away and it comes back to the previous state, right? So if I do this, press, do it. Now, what I will also say is when I release my finger, which is basically the surface press up, when I do that, one thing is I want you to set the press effect to turn it off. I just want you to turn it off because I'm not pressing anymore. I also want you to do another thing. What I want you to do is come here and send out some sort of a signal, all right? And to send out that signal, it's pretty simple to set up. How do we send out that signal, all right? Because we need to tell the button to communicate with this area or basically this entire animation and say, hey, the button press is complete, start the animation, right? So. What I need to do is I click on the plus here and I want to choose something called as an input change, which is basically another one of this, right? We're just choosing an, an input. And here I have all of these inputs. What I want now is to choose an input called as a trigger. And if I click on a trigger, you can see it's like a gunshot. It's like, it's not like an on and off state. So when I click on the press up, I want you to do things. One is turn off this press effect and also I want you to choose this trigger and let's rename this. We can say start animation. That's the name of the trigger. It's like a gunshot, all right? So when I press up, when I release my finger, then I want you to go and choose the start animation. And it's basically going to trigger that, bam, it's just going to trigger that. So let's see if this is first of all working, all right? So I'm going to go ahead and click on play over here, all right? Now, of course, we haven't synced it up with this, all right? We just need to see if this first works. So we want to hover over here. We see the hover effect state checkbox. I'm going to click the press effect state checkbox. And now when I release my finger, you see that it didn't change over here. Now, if I go to the console, let's actually see what happened, all right? Now, there's a lot that's happening over here. Now, we just need to focus. We All of this is basically the um, other animations. We just want to focus on what happened over here towards the end. So let's do this again, because I think I hovered and I added a lot more effects. So let's, let's actually do that again. Go design, animate, okay. And now I'm going to play this. I'm going to let, let, let it do all of that. All right, so all of that is done. So at 16, everything is done. I'm going to hover. I'm going to press. I'm going to release. And I'm going to hover away, okay. So now if you see over here, the button animation, right? So the button active state to button hover state, if I increase this. So the button active state to hover state, all right, it happened, so the button hovered, and the press, all right, and then I pressed on it, so the press effect was set to true, all right, and then the hover state to the press state. So when the press state, if I come over here, so I bring this closer, when the press effect is set to true, then I transition from the hover state to the pressed state, all right, and then when I released my finger, the press effect was set to false, and then you can see something called as start animation fired. 
So we didn't really see the dot over here, but it actually happened in the backend, all right? And also the button pressed state went back to the button hover state because I because obviously the effect was turned off, the press effect was turned off, it defaulted back to the hover state. But it also triggered that animation called as start animation. So now that means this is working. Now we just need to tell this thing to listen and to listen to this signal, all right? It needs to wait for this signal to happen before it starts the animation. So how do we do that? Very simple. If I come here to our progress bar animation, and if I go to the entry, all right, we have two roads. It can either go to this road and go to the blend state, or it can come over here and do the first animation. Now the condition to go with on this road is basically if the value is greater than or equal to 600. And the condition to go to this road is if it is the opposite, if it is less than 600, all right? So quickly to recap what that means, if I set the score here to let's say 300, it is less than 600, it's going to take this road. So if I play this, you can see it took this road and then it basically did the blend, all right? Now, what I want to say is whatever route you're taking, it doesn't matter. You can take this route or this route, I don't really care. You have your condition based on the number, but I want you to actually start moving only after this start animation has been triggered. So what does that mean? That means I need to set a condition here saying that move to this road if the final score is equal to or greater than 600, but also wait for this start animation trigger to happen. So you can click on the plus here and here I can say start animation. So I'm setting two conditions. You have to meet both of the conditions. The value needs to be greater than or equal to 600 and this trigger needs to happen. Only once that happen, you take this road. Now over here, I'm not setting the number condition because this it will if the value is less than or equal to 600, it's automatically going to pick up this road. So you take this road if it is less than 600, but also I want you to wait for the start animation. So click on condition and choose start animation. So now let's see what happens. Now if I play this, now you see it's stuck at that entry state because now it has chosen the road. It is 300, so it has chosen this road, but it's not going to go through that road because it's waiting for this start animation to happen. So now, if I hover on the button and I press, and now I release, then the animation, as you can see, happens. Because when I removed my hand from the trackpad, this got fired, and then now it knows already which road to take. Whether it's 300, it takes this road. If it is greater than 600, it takes this road, right? So if I play this again, and let's say I set this to, I don't know, uh, let's say 1000, right? Now if I play this, it's, it's over here, as you can see. Now it's waiting for the trigger. It has chosen the road. So now when I click on the button, it gets triggered and now it chooses the road and it does its thing. Now, if you see over here, when I played this, the star animation already happened. So what we can do is we can come here and we can set that same condition over here, all right? Now we set a condition over here. What we can also do is we can set another condition here and call this start animation. Because both of these are not connected to each other. They are separate animations, all right? They are separate animations not connected to each other. So we need to set that rule over here as well, all right? So now let's play this again. So now if I play this, now you can see it's stuck over here, okay? It's going to move. It know, Now it knows that the value is 1000 and it has to move, but it has to wait for the button to be animated. So if I go ahead and now hover, press, when I remove the press, then you can see it moves over here. Now, as you can see, there's another problem. So if I play this, all right, and if I press and release, it automatically plays. Because what is happening is that we set that condition over here. All right, it's already at the blank state and it is ready to execute this. So instead, what we need to do is I'm going to delete this from here and add it to this. So here, if I say start animation, so it's going to wait, so let's play this, right? If I play this, it's going to wait over here. When I press, it's going to come to the blank state, all right? And here, it's going to wait in the blank state for one second, which is basically 100%. So if I click on the blank state, you can see we have um, one second of nothing, all right? Because that's the blank state. 
And then once that is over, it moves on to this. So we need to add that condition over here. So now let's check this out. So now if I play this, you can see it's now it's at the entry state. And now if I press the button, it does the one second wait and then it moves on to the next one. Now if I set any other number, let's say we set something like uh, 785, all right? I click on play, everything is waiting. I click on start, I press release and then the animation happens, there we go. And it just moves like five pixels over here. So that's how we triggered this. Now, one last thing is that we need to be able to disable this button when the animation starts, because until the animation happens, I don't want to be able to hover on this. So if I press this again, and if I play this, you can see I can hover on it multiple times, which doesn't make sense. It needs to be in a disabled state. So let's go ahead and add a disabled state to this. So here in the button pressed, I'm going to add a timeline and I'm going to call this button disabled state, okay? And I'm going to add it to the state machine over here in the button animation. Now, add that over here and I'm going to link this up. Now, the moment I finish the button state, I want you to, I want to immediately move to the button disabled state, like quickly move, you know, I don't need any sort of delay, just quickly. When the button is pressed, I remove my finger, just go to the disabled state. So let's go ahead and design, design the disabled state. So I'm gonna to go to the button disabled state, all right? And in fact, I'm actually gonna go ahead and um, uh, delete this one. I'm just gonna duplicate the button press state so I can basically have all the values over here. I can go ahead and say duplicate and I can call this button disabled state, okay? So now let's see how the button disabled state should look like. Okay, so first of all, the text, all right, the position is fine. I want to change the text itself from start to reset, like the actual text itself, I want to change that. So if I come over here, we have this thing called as a run, all right? And I can just go ahead and call this a uh, placeholder or I can say CTA, right, whatever. And here I will add a, a keyframe and I'm going to change this to reset. Now, because we didn't add this text run keyframe over here in the pressed state, I'm going to go and add that over here. So I'm just going to come over here and click a keyframe. So in the disabled state, it would be reset. In the press state, it would be this, okay? Now, now I'm going to click on the surface over here, make sure you're in the disabled state. Now the position also, I want that to be uh, minus four. So set that to minus two, okay? The surface over here, I want that to be four pixels above, one, two, three, four. Basically resetting over what we had. And also the shadow, I'm going to pick that up. Make sure you're in the disabled state and I'm going to just increase that. Okay, uh, I don't remember what the value was. So if I choose the active state or the press state, I guess, or let's hover state, I guess. Yeah, so the height was 53, position minus two. So I'm gonna do the same thing over here. Height 53, position minus two, whatever. Or actually this would be minus two and this would be zero and I will just remove this. Oh. So now this is basically what we have, right? We're just resetting it back to how it was. Now also, I want to change the color. So here in Figma, I have uh, this color. So I'm just gonna go ahead and copy this color. So copy this color, come back over here and I'm going to paste the color over here. And I'm gonna copy the second color, copy that. And I'm going to paste that over here. Let's say click on this, uh, no, not the stroke, the base. Okay, now I don't want this stroke, all right? So I can probably just um, keyframe the stroke value as well. So basically here, I can just set the stroke value to be zero. And in the press state, I can have it on. So let's just have it on. So in the press state, we have it on. Disabled state, we have it off, right? So this is basically how the disabled state looks like, right? And I can't hover on it or tap on it or do whatever. So now in the state machine, if I come over here, um, this was basically the placeholder. I can drag the button disable state. I can hold option on the keyboard, okay? And I can just drag it over and it basically replaces that. So now this will automatically move to the button disabled state when this is complete, right? So here, let's play this and let's see what happens, right? I play, hover, press. Now the moment, like, I didn't even let go. I just pressed and held down. I didn't even let it go. The reason it moved over here is because we didn't add a condition, 
it just automatically moved because we added a condition over here, all right? Press effect is false. So what I will do is I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna delete that. And instead I will add that over here and say, when the press effect is false, which means when I remove my finger from the trackpad, I want you to transition to the false. I want you to set the press effect to false. And then when the press effect is false, I want you to transition over here, right? So to really recap, when I press up, which is I release my finger, set the press effect to false. So the press effect becomes false when I release my finger. When the press effect is false, you go ahead and you transition from the press state to the disabled state, which is what I've defined over here. So now let's play this again and let's see if this works. So I hover, hover is working great. I press, still good. When I release my finger, immediately move to the reset state, right? And at this point, we are doing two things. So when the press up happens, we are doing two things, start the animation and then do this. So now if I go ahead and play this, if I press this, you see does goes ahead and does the animation and then it looks like this. Now the hover effect still works, but it doesn't really do anything because there are, there are, it, it ends over here. You know, I can't go anywhere else. So that's how you go ahead and reset the entire animation and trigger it with the button press. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys really enjoyed it. If you did, let me know in the comment section down below. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more amazing, awesome content. I'll see you guys in the next video. So then take care and bye-bye.